It was never meant to live this long. Born in the shadows of the Cold War, designed for a war that never happened, and dismissed more times than any aircraft in modern U.S. military history. Yet, like a soldier who refuses to die, the A-10 Thunderbolts, two, the Warthog, keeps coming back to the battlefield. But today, it faces a new enemy, not Soviet tanks, not insurgents in distant deserts, but silence, retirement, extinction. And one question remains. Can this rugged attack aircraft from the 1970s transform into one of the most unexpected tools of modern warfare? A drone hunter in the age of artificial intelligence? To answer that, we have to go back to the late 1960s. The Pentagon of supersonic jets, sleek fighters that could break the sound barrier and dominate the sky. But wars were changing. Vietnam had shown the harsh truth. Troops on the ground desperately needed close air support. They didn't need speed or style. They needed survival. A small group of engineers from Fairchild Republic, led by Alexander Kartveli, refused to follow the trend. They proposed something radical, an aircraft that was slow, ugly, heavily armored, and built solely to protect infantry. They called it the AX program. Their idea was simple, but uncompromising. They wanted a plane that could hover low over the battlefield, see the enemy clearly, and strike tanks, vehicles, and artillery with deadly accuracy, while keeping the pilot alive, even if the aircraft took massive damage. This was the birth of the A-10 Thunderbolt Sutors. Two, a machine so strange that even its creators knew this was not a fighter. This was a weapon of survival. Unlike traditional aircraft, the A-10 was engineered from the inside out. It didn't start with a sleek shell. It began with a cockpit of pure titanium, a bathtub of armor over 1.5 inches thick at its strongest points surrounded the pilot. It could resist direct hits from 23-millimeter armor-piercing rounds and survive fragments from 57-millimeter anti-aircraft shells. That bathtub alone weighed over 1,200 pounds, about 5% of the entire aircraft's empty weight. Even the floor and side panels were wrapped in nylon anti-splinter layers to catch shrapnel. The canopy was armored against small arms fire. Every part of this aircraft was designed with one principle, protect the pilot at all costs. Behind the armor came the engines, two General Electric TF-34 turbofan engines mounted high on the fuselage, not for looks, but for protection. This location shielded them from rocks, debris, even tree branches when operating from makeshift airstrips. They were spaced apart to reduce the chance that a single missile or shell could disable both. Their high bypass design reduced infrared. Signatures, making it harder for heat-seeking missiles to lock on. The exhausts were placed to blow across the tail, dispersing the heat trail even further. Fuel systems were another miracle of battlefield engineering. Four fuel tanks sat near the aircraft's center, separated from the fuselage. Each was designed to self-seal if hit. If a tank was damaged beyond sealing, valves cut it off instantly. Foam inside and outside the tanks absorbed explosions, trapped leaking fuel, and minimized fire. Even the fuel lines could close themselves like blood vessels when punctured. And in the worst case scenario, if every tank was lost, the A-10 carried two small backup sumps, enough fuel to fly 230 miles and get the pilot home. Firewalls, extinguishers, and redundant systems meant this aircraft could fly with half a TD, wing, one engine, a missing elevator, or even without hydraulics. That is not theory. That is not myth. It happened. Spring 2003. Captain <laughs> Killer Chick Campbell was flying over Baghdad during Operation Iraqi Freedom when her aircraft was hit by enemy anti-aircraft fire. Her hydraulics 
were destroyed. Any normal aircraft would spiral out of the sky. But the A-10 had one more trick, a manual backup system. No hydraulics, only raw muscle, cables, and mechanical force. Campbell took control manually, stabilized the aircraft, and flew for over an hour back to Al Jaber Air Base in Kuwait. Her warthog landed, shredded with holes, its tail torn, systems crippled, but alive. This moment became living proof. The A-10 was not designed to be invincible. It was designed to use death. But survivability was only half its story. The real weapon that defined the warthog wasn't its armor. It was the gun. In 1971, two companies, General Electric and Philco Ford, were contracted to design a new cannon for the AX program. It had to destroy Soviet tanks from the sky. It had to be powerful, accurate, and reliable. General Electric won. Their creation was the JU-8A Avenger, the most powerful aircraft cannon ever built. A seven-barrel, hydraulically driven Gatling gun firing 3,900 rounds per minute. Each shell was nearly 30 centimeters long, made with depleted uranium or armor-piercing incendiary compounds. One round could punch through tank armor. It was so large and heavy that engineers didn't install it into the aircraft. They built the aircraft around it. The gun alone made up 16% of the plane's empty weight when they removed it. For maintenance, they had to put a jack under the aircraft's tail, or it would tip backward. Early tests brought problems. The cannon's blast blinded pilots with smoke and flash. Hot gases were sucked into the engines, stalling them mid-air. Soot blackened the windscreen after firing. It took a decade of redesigns, ignition systems, to restart engines during firing, windshield washers, heat-resistant components, but the result was extraordinary. This cannon became the heart of the A-10. Its sound became a symbol of close air support around the world. Yet, the A-10's greatest struggle was not in combat, but in Washington. From 2008 to 2025, there were at least nine official attempts to retire the Warthog. The U.S. Air Force argued it was outdated too slow for modern warfare, too vulnerable against advanced enemies, and too expensive to maintain. They wanted funds for the F-35 Lightning II and future sixth-generation fighters. But Congress resisted. Ground troops, Marines, soldiers, even Special Forces commanders defended the A-10. They argued that no aircraft matched its ability to deliver precise, devastating support to troops in contact with the enemy. In 2023, retirement began cautiously. By early fiscal year 2024, two 18A-10s were still flying. By December 2024, 39 more were retired, about 18% of the fleet. The end seemed certain. Even as aircraft were retired, the remaining A-10s received one final powerful upgrade, Suite 11. This modernization brought high-resolution cockpit displays, 3D audio, jam-resistant GPS, ARC-2 Centon radio upgrades, and perhaps most importantly, the ability to use GBU 39B small diameter bombs. This meant the A-10 could now strike from greater distances while staying out of enemy missile range. And then came an even more surprising development. The A-10 was approved to use the Advanced Precision Kill Weapon System, or APKWS. This system transforms standard 70mm rockets into laser-guided missiles. The newest version, Integrating, Falco software-based targeting, gives aircraft like the A-10 a new skill. The ability to engage slow-moving aerial targets like drones and cruise missiles. These missiles are cheap, around $25,000 each, compared to hundreds of thousands for standard air-to-air -air missiles. A single A-10 could carry dozens. It could circle low, stay on station for hours, engage drone swarms, and even destroy unmanned surface vessels at sea.
For the first time in decades, the world asked, could the A-10, built to destroy Soviet tanks, become a drone hunter? Critics argue the A-10 has no radar to detect drones, but supporters offer solutions. It doesn't need its own radar if it can receive targeting data from F-15s, F-16s, AWACS aircraft, satellites, or ground units. Or a simple modification, a targeting pod under the wing, could give it independent detection capability. What the A-10 does have is loiter time, stability, and unmatched visibility for the pilot. It can fly low, slow, and stay in combat zones longer than fighters. It can carry rockets, bombs, air-to-ground missiles, and now precision anti-drone weapons. But all of this depends on one thing, survival, not in battle, but in budget meetings, strategic plans, and political debates. So here we are, an aircraft designed for a world that no longer exists. A machine that has survived wars, politics, budget cuts, and time itself. Now it stands at a crossroads. One path leads to museums, silence, and memory. The other path leads to a new role. Hunting drones, protecting troops, and flying into the 2030s. Its engines are old. Its wings creak. Its skin carries the scars of decades. But its purpose, saving lives on the ground, is as relevant as ever. So the question is not about technology. It is about belief. Do we believe there is still a place in modern warfare for a slow, armored, battle-proven aircraft? Do we believe that experience, reliability, and survivability matter more than speed and stealth? Or is this the final chapter of the Warthog? Tell us what you think. Should the A-10 evolve into a drone hunter? Or is it finally time to say goodbye? Share your thoughts in the comments. If you enjoyed this story, make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on notifications for more content just like this. Thank you for watching. And until next time, never underestimate a legend.